Hey everybody, welcome back to another Slime Fun Filled episode with your host Boomer. Today we're going to take a very deep dive into all of the Androids. The questions come up a lot about how to program them, what do I do, what can they do, what are their ranges, and so on and so forth. And we're going to try to answer as many of those questions as I possibly can. I may not answer every question, but put them in a the chat, I'll get you an answer. Previously I've featured just the advanced programmable farmer androids. We're going to look at all of them. So today let's start with the fisherman. First, the fisherman runs on solid fuel. So unless you're using coal blocks or kelp blocks, for one, don't even bother. The amount of material and resources you're going to have to put in here is crazy. The only one I would use would even be the kelp blocks. I wouldn't even waste your time wasting the resources of the coal blocks. You're going to get quite a bit from this guy. You can get cooked fish, raw fish, you can get leather, you can get kelp, you can get bamboo, you can get puffer fish, saddles, rotten flesh, string, nautilus shells, and there's probably one or two items that I haven't even gotten yet. Now, while that's, I just wanted to run just for a minute here. I want to try to clear out some of my inventory because I'm going to need it for later on down the road. I'm not sure why I have infernal dust, but that was not something that you would get. All right. So let's look at this android and see what he's mine. So far, he's gotten string. And again, you're going to get a lot of the same things that you would get from fishing. Blocks of coal less, if I remember right, it's either minute 20 or minute 30. It's about the same as a kelp block. That's why I'm saying create a kelp farm. Create kelp blocks, bottle crafting it. Don't waste your coal on this. It is not worth it, in my opinion. Now, if you want fish, cooked and or raw, this is worth it. If you use the kelp blocks, by all means, because it's an automated process. Now, as far as the code in the core, for the script, this is probably the easiest one. This is all I've got right now. I set it to catch fish, and then I set it to repeat the script over and over. Now, if you want to program it with the fuel source and dumping the items, then let's go into editing the script, right? So we would say catch fish. We would say catch fish. We would say catch fish. We're going to do that probably 46 or 47 times. Then we're going to say add new command. And I want it to, uh, in this case, I want it to turn right. Because by turning right, I have my fuel source over here. So then after turning right, we're going to say, pull fuel. Then we need it to get it over to dumping its item. So now we're going to have it turn left twice. So it's facing it. And then we're going to say, push inventory. Now we've got to turn it back to the water. Now, technically, I don't have to. The water's below me in this case but I want it starting in the same direction every time. So we're going to say turn right. And then after it turns right, we're going to uh, have it start fishing again. So right now we're at fish, 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 fish. What happened here? Did it change? Oh, I must have clicked the wrong button. Sorry. Okay. So fish, 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 turn right, pull fuel. Turn left, turn left, push items, and then turn right. Somewhere I must have clicked on a button inappropriately. So catch, 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 do this all the time, fill it all that you can, and then turn right, pull your items for fuel, turn left twice, dump your inventory into the interface, come back and turn right, and then start your script. And that will repeat over and over and over. So what I'm talking about, as many as you can for catching fish. Take a look. It takes one, two, three, four, five, six to reset your Android. So save the first five rows for catching fish, the last row to push and pull your items. Okay? And simply, it'll run your script over and over, and you're going to get all sorts of fishies and fun little items in here. All right? Give me a second. Let me get set up for the next one. So let's move on to the butcher android. This baby needs uranium, boosted uranium, or plutonium, but it runs for an awfully long time. Now, if you've got uranium farm set up like I do, where you're turning cobble into uranium and you're just crafting it into the actual uranium ingots, who cares? This is nothing. This is pretty cheap, actually, in that case. If you're doing it manually, yeah, it's expensive as heck. Don't do this unless you're fully automated. So as far as the script is concerned, I've got mine set up really quick. Kill animals that are adults now you do have a few different options you can kill just adult passive mob animals you can kill all animals which includes babies you can kill all hostile mobs 
or hostile mobs in all animals. So I've set mine for a doe. As far as what type of hostile mob, I believe anything that's classified as a hostile mob. If you're unsure, fastest way to find out is test it. Okay. Other than that, the other commands in here are no different. You're simply looking at do nothing, wait, turn left, turn right. So in this case, you're only attacking them in front of you or within the range. And I believe the range is six blocks in any direction. I've gone seven and nothing has happened to them. Now, I've also got set up here a auto breeder and a growth accelerator. They will go, anytime a baby is spawned, the growth accelerator will continue to try to grow the baby to an adult. Once that adult is within six blocks of my Android, He's going to get killed. Now, I forgot to turn my Android back on. Isn't that funny? There we go. Okay. So, within six blocks. So, there's four, five, six. The hearts are appearing because you're seeing the... Um, sorry, the auto breeder chamber kick in. Now, seven blocks out, the hearts happen. As soon as he gets within six, okay, great. Then, yeah, he's dead. So, let's spawn two adults. They're going to make a baby. And you're going to see that baby start to see those little green stars it's because the baby's being accelerated into an adult. Look at that. It only took five minutes. It took about five seconds. So while this is not how I would set up my farm using this, down here, I would have the growth accelerator farm. Up here, somewhere at least six blocks above the android, so seven away, I would put a breeding chamber. And have two adults up here. Actually, I'd put a bunch of adults up here with the auto breeder. Have the babies fall in here, then get hit with the growth accelerator, and then have the android do its thing. That way, you continuously have a breeding cycle going on. They drop down here, they get killed. Now, you could have them fall into water so they don't take damage. I don't care. They're only going to fall seven or eight blocks, it's not going to kill them. Now again, this is not how I would set the chamber up. I would set it up completely different. Maybe use water to push them all down. Just make sure that you are in range of the auto breeder. So what is the range of the auto breeder? Well, let's try to find out. So we can see that we're not in range of the breeder because he didn't get hit by the hearts. He didn't get hit. He didn't get hit. He didn't get hit. Okay, so three blocks. So if you build the chamber, I would build a seven by seven chamber, put the auto breeder in the exact center. Have it sitting above them so that the, they can fall by force of water or you could have the baby some type of trap or the trap door where it's only a, you know their height because the cows are more than one block high. Set a trap door above one block so that they could fall. So for example, If I were using water, I would have them funnel so that way the babies fall underneath this trap door, but the adults would walk right into it. And then simply have enough of them up there so that the auto breeder continues to kick in. Then down here, run the growth accelerator in the chamber so that once they become adults, the android gets them and that's the end of it. Now, as far as the range, I'm going to stop the breeder or the android just to get the range on the growth accelerator. So let's put two cows here and see if we get their stars. Okay, so right there was the first one, so it looks like four blocks, right? Yep, one, two, th three, actually that's three. I don't think it was here. No, oh, there it is. Okay, so it is four. So the it has a radius of four is what it looks like. I don't think we saw it at five, but let's test five. No, nope. so it is four. All right, so there we go. And it might even say it in the guide too. But there's our butcher android. Now, from what I understand, at the more advanced levels, if we go into the guide, We get to the advanced butcher. The damage is quicker and it has a much greater fuel efficiency. But from what I can tell, the ranges do not change. Now, if somebody knows differently and can prove it, please tell me. But I have not been able to get anyone beyond six. 
So let me move to the next Android. Look familiar to anybody? It's a basic Skyblock cobble generator. That's all we've built. Now I've set my Android to mine directly in front of me and there are a few different ways. You can even get this Android to move. I'm going to recommend against that. Um, I haven't tested it recently, but there were issues when Androids would move sometimes that they would get separated from their block data. So for the purposes of a cobble generator, this is what I would set up. It's real simple. So let's move, look into this guy. He's got a number of different ways he can mine. So if we come in here, he can mine by digging upwards, digging forward, digging down, move and dig upwards, move and dig forward, move and dig downwards. So he could actually, in theory, if you programmed it right, he could actually dig you a pit of going forward, going forward. So it'd have to be, because you got to figure it's maximum of 54 commands, and you've got to have fuel sources as well as uh, inputs for him to move his items. If you had them staged along the way at the right spot, you could actually program it. So you can do 54 commands, for this guy, since he can move and dig forward, move and dig upward. So let's say he did forward eight times. Then he turned left, so that's nine. Eight times, turn left, that's nine. That would be 36. And then the 37th command might be dig down. And then that's where you have the fuel and the items stacked in a corner. In that case, they could dig a nine by nine, or really they could probably do a 10 by 10 hole all the way down to bedrock. Whoa, I'm going to have to work on that and see if I can't dig out a mass chamber that way with androids. That'd be cool. I'm, I, I'm going to work on that for an episode. I'm going to write that down. That's a great idea. But again, you would simply put, you know, the inventory on one side or another to where he would, you know, for this particular setup where you would put fuel on one side, items on another. Now, there is only one Android miner, to my knowledge. I don't believe there is a level 2. There is not. So, this is the only speed he runs at. But again, why do you need one? I've built, and I think you go back to episode 20 or 21, I built a tower of Androids mining. Now, again, the problem becomes fuel. Don't use coal. Use kelp blocks. But you could literally build a water lava tower 25 blocks high that you could use a hundred of these on as long as you've got the fuel sources and move it all back and forth. Go back. Let me look at this up real quick on, a, on my channel. I want to say it's episode 20 where I actually did that. Uh, actually, it might have been a couple of episodes where you can create a tower of water and lava and set all these my androids up let's go back here to the tutorials episode dust farming uh high yield sub okay we're back tree farming it's, yeah it's i think it's somewhere between 18 and 19 i set up i can see the tower on the 19 when i was testing high yield farming so yeah, I'm going to say check out either 18 or 19 and you should be able to see how the tower is set up. But anyways, I'm kind of digressing here a little bit. But you could set up a ton of these. So let's move on to the next Android. All right, so I held off setting this guy up until we were all on camera. I grew a too tall spruce tree because I really wanted you to see this. So again, dried kelp block, go into the memory core. Now, when you set this script up, you only need to do this once. Chop and replant. Then transfer your items to a fuel uh, to an uh, input for the Android item transfer. Uh, why can't I remember the darn name of the thing? Anyways, send the items out and then bring your fuel source in, but only chop and replant once. This represents an entire tree. If you say chop and replant over and over, and you've got a bone meal dispenser setup system set up that you use, for example, I put an observer here, sent out a signal when this changed. To a, you know, it got cut down, or I'm sorry, I think it's this one. The very last one that the Android cuts, as soon as the observer detects a block update, I had an observer send a pulse to a bone meal dispenser using burnout torches 
that it would fire eight bone meal on a plant to cause another tree to grow. If you send multiple chop and replants, your Android will fill up with items before it transfers. On every other Android, you say mine, that's one block, it's got to do it again. If you say farm or fish, that's one item, you got to do it again. Here it's the entire stinking tree. So the most fuel efficient one, if you need just wood because you want to turn it into charcoal, use the two high spruce. So let's set this up. Let's go into the Android memory core, edit the script, chop and replant. Then I would say push your items, pull your fuel, and then restart. You ready? This is so cool. I love this. Let's get up here. You see what it did? Place its first one, and then it starts chopping up the tree. So we're going to go to the top here and watch it. what happens when it gets up here. It's coming up the left side. There it is. And it's going to go back down the left side. Isn't it nice? This is, this is, this is sweet. If you want a lot of charcoal, and I understand a lot of people do this, you'll set up a bunch of these for charcoal. You smelt the wood in the charcoal, and then you turn it into coal through a press. And that's one perfectly acceptable way to do it. If you're using the too tall spruce, it's the most fuel efficient way to do it. But don't do it with any single trees. Don't do it with oak and don't do it with acacia. You're not going to like the results, especially when the oak tree becomes a big one. In acacia, same thing. You're going to have a problem with the diagonal. All right. Use the too tall and I would use too tall jungle or too tall spruce. And I would only use the jungle if you don't have another option because, again, the jungle tree, tree creates those little offshoots that it can't always mine. So you come back down to the spruce, bone meal it again, and it's off to the races again. Here's why I said don't keep chopping and replanting over and over. There was 100 blocks in there after it finished the first tree. If you do 10 chop and replants, your Android inventory is full and it's locked. That's why you've got to transfer the items after every chop and replant and then get more fuel. So as far as the Android tree chopper woodcutter, there is only one. That is the basic rate that he runs. The only other Android we have not talked about yet is the um, farmer. And give me one second to set that up. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so let's talk about the last one here, the farmer androids. We've got our basic programmable. And if we go into his script, we'll see that he's able to harvest and replant in front of him or harvest and replant the block underneath him. So we could actually place him on top of this potato and he would harvest and, and replant. Let me start him back up. So you see once he detects there's a full grown potato, he's going to pick it up and he'll keep doing that over and over. Now, the advanced one is what you need to farm stuff like the diamond plants to get that essence, to make them diamonds, and all the other plants that are included in Exotic Garden. Let's look at his core. So, he can harvest and replant in front. He can also harvest and replant underneath. But, because a head spawns on top of it, you actually need to put him, and I know I'm putting a woodcutter down, just to show you, he actually needs to be up here. If you were to put him directly above the plant, this head can't grow, therefore he can't harvest. So you need to put him directly above that head. Now for our purposes here, we're going to set his script to harvest and replant in front. So we've got harvest and replant in front. We're going to repeat script. Now this guy runs off of liquid. So we're going to give this guy lava and start up. Do not, please, do not use, oops, i got to be careful when I do that. Do not use oil. Oil is so expensive that if you want to run the Android on oil, you're going to run out of it really quick. Just simply set up the crucible and let it pump lava in there, the electrified crucible. Just create lava over and over. Don't waste your resources on oil or fuel. Don't Matter of fact, don't even... Wasted in oil and don't convert the oil to fuel just to waste it in here. Lava is a regenerative resource over and over. Fuel and oil are not. Okay? Always, always lava these guys. All right? Otherwise, you're going to find out that you're not going to be able to run your Androids unless you do. So, that's all of our Androids. Now, just real quick, going back into the guide, you can see that the miner only has one level. The farmer actually has two. Again, as we just said, one for vanilla crops.
The other one will do vanilla crops as well, so don't worry. The nice thing about the advanced programmable farmer is that the fuel efficiency increases. So if you want to pay the extra price to craft it and run it, it's a much more efficient on the fuel. You've got the woodcutter, only level one. You get the advanced fisherman, which goes to levels two and three, and the butcher, which goes to levels two and three. The programmable normal and the programmable and the empowered programmable normal. These are not Androids that will do anything. You simply have to create that and then convert it into a fisherman. So if I'm working with a fisherman and I want to upgrade it to an empowered fisherman, you can't. They are not upgradable. You have to craft the programmable first, then the advanced programmable, then the empowered, and then turn it into a butcher by adding the two swords, the motor, and the transmitter. Once you've crafted it a, a certain type of Android, they are not uncraftable, nor are they upgradable. So hopefully I've answered just about every question you've had. I am going to work on creating a couple of videos that will show you the full capability of these Androids. Also, crop growth accelerators work in this scenario, as would the tree growth accelerator. The one thing about the tree growth accelerator, unless this has changed, and I haven't tested it recently, is that it only fires on a tree once. If that's changed, that changes tree farming dramatically and not having to use bone meal anymore. If it is only once, great, no big deal. You can put a few of them down if you wanted to. But I think once it's detected that it's hit it, it won't hit it again. So bone meal is probably still the best option. For crops, you can use a crop growth accelerator. I'm gonna tell you, it's a lot of resources and material to get it to fire. And unless you're using the advanced programmable on vanilla crops, it's actually a losing battle on material to get the crop growth accelerator to do what it needs to do. So we're going to wrap up here. I want to figure out how to do that. I want to see if I can get minor androids to actually dig me a hole from sea level down to bedrock. So I'm going to work on that. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. If you have additional questions about the Android, please put them in the comments below. But always, when you're playing Slime Fun, don't forget, you got to go Boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later.